What is up, my beautiful lovelies? Your girl is back with another podcast, another message, another segment where the Holy Spirit says, Mention me, bring me Ruach Akadash on the forefront of the ministry. All right. So God had literally brought me to this portion where we was reading in the Bible and how Jesus, my God, thank you, Lord, that you are taking care of all of my enemies and our enemies. And thank you, Lord, that the boatload has been released. Y'all stay in tune with these words because I'm trying to tell y'all they've been on a whole nother level. When I say a whole nother level, I'm talking about God has been answering every single detail of what you would want to know. Listen. And so he was highlighting to me how uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees was watching Jesus as Jesus chose to heal a woman, my God, who was bound by Satan for like 18 years over something um, that had her bent over or bent down, like, you know, to a state of her her existence where she needed a outpouring. She needed a outreach. She needed somebody to do something that somebody didn't do for her for 18 years that she was dealing with such a, a matter. And so and when Jesus decided to heal her, God literally was like, you hypocrites, like, you know, you hypocrites, because they start, they start, the Pharisees and Sadducees start to look at Jesus because he chose to heal her on the Sabbath day. And he like, you healing is only for the, the Pharisees, you know, they like healing is only for six days, every six days on the Sabbath day, you shouldn't be healing. Instead of them focusing on my God, the promotion, instead of them focusing on this, this lady being set free, instead of them focusing on the positive, Instead of on focusing on the saving, instead of on focusing on the rescue, instead of on focusing on the mission, instead of on focusing on the incline, instead of on focusing on what heaven was just pouring out the miraculous deeds of my God, our Lord and Savior. Hear me now. They was only focusing on what they seen with their own physical standpoints of how they their perceptions thought things should be and making them think that they're God in whose life, not in our God's life. And it was so interesting, as it, it, it said in the Bible, how uh, God was like. And said, my, it said, uh, the Lord spoke to them and said, uh, thank you, Jesus. Help me, help, help me, Holy Spirit. It said, the Lord spoke to them and said, um, don't you guys take out your donkeys and feed them on the Sabbath or water or give, yeah, give them water to drink? So here's my thing. There are some people that so focused on the wrong thing. They so focused on the wrong atmosphere, the wrong, the wrong direction of where they looking at you on. And, and, and my God, that's what that's where you see the blame game at. That's where you take your hand off the offense. That's when you stop looking at them and stop even allowing my God to say anything back to them because you start to understand that you serve a God who will go out the way and break the rule for you. You serve a God, my God, who will not stand in the midst of certain statues of what's being set. Hear me now. That's trying to make uh, you be limited towards the resources that you need. You serve a God who goes above and beyond to see you. Hear me now for a situation that you've been trying to reach him on or reach the world on, but nobody could give you such the matter. And so once you realize certain situations, will cause God to speak over that thing and when God speak over that thing he not just speaking over that thing but he's speaking to that thing and because you realize we're talking about the omnipotent God who hear me now who hear me now created them created the people the Pharisees the Sadducees who's actually pointing to his his son pointing to pointing at his son who's doing the healing and so when I looked at it and how it said the Lord spoke with such a tone you know it, it cracked me up because I was like it, it brought me back to the way where God is the head over Christ and Christ the head over man and man the head over woman or Christ the head over the body of church of the alignment hear me now husband love your wife like Christ loved the church it made me see that even when the situation gets sticky, there are certain things that God will, you you won't even know what just came over. You just had to say something. You just had to say a, cer say a certain something out your lips. You just had to say a certain thing. And you look up and you like, dang, did I really just give that truth? That truth just come over me like that? Baby, it was God speaking that truth to that person because at the same token or the spirit that's in that person, hear me now, at the spirit that's in that person, because we do know, we know, I'm talking to a mature group who love, hear me now, solid food. I'm talking to a tr uh, uh, a tree of life I know I'm talking to a mature a mature group who loves to go be up, above and beyond in Christ Jesus hear me now I'm talking to a mature group that is 
loving the teachings teachings of righteousness hear me now i'm talking to a mature group hear me now who goes about with the cleansing rites of god the instructions of god the laying of hands of god the resurrection of the dead hear me now and eternal judgment hear me now i, I i'm talking to a mature crowd who truly understands hear me now my god He brings me right here, guys, to Hebrews 6. Therefore, uh, therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundations. Hear me now. God is saying he love you, child of God. There is a special someone God is saying I love you too. Yeah, and the enemy try to speak on your name, but God is saying I'm sending you a boatload of blessings being released upon you because he keep putting your name in, your, in his mouth. He keep trying to use you as a distraction. And so God is going to bless you. And if you feel the Holy Ghost on this word, baby, just start calling into agreement with it. Hear me now. Okay. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from the acts led to death and of faith in God instruction about clears and rights and laying on the hands the res resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment and God permitting we will do so so you guys mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. I want to talk to y'all he having me to keep going reading but I want to say this really 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 quickly quickly there was a point in my life where I'm not sure if you guys have followed me if you have followed me from the beginning stages of every single detail of the videos go back if you haven't there's a video that I shared that was talking about my journey from um, walking with Christ to new age and then being delivered and led back to Christ and for good and eternally right and so I just wanted to share with you guys no matter where your journey starts where your journey you know um ends up there's always a chance to turn back from your own ways that is sinful and my god that tried to separate you from god and find an everlasting home where you actually belong where you actually feel the love of christ where you actually you know have the overflow of what you were looking for outwardly poured inwardly and outwardly and so i just feel led to share you to you guys that a lot of the things that i'm you know testifying through like as the holy spirit is testifying through me about jesus is things that he has healed in me things that he has allowed me to see overcome and I listen y'all listen y'all ain't nothing like the most high God ain't nothing like Jesus ain't nothing like getting it right and going through Christ to find your way to the exact spot of where you need to be to live freely and God everything else is leads to a doorway that leads to another doorway that leads to another doorway that leads to a loophole that ends up to destruction and so this is what I want to let y'all know and I just started talking dang okay we go in there there was this time in my life where I was following down the path of destruction and it went into I hit the doorway of destruction because I was so focused on trying to get to every doorway, trying to know all the answers to life, feeling like everything that I was getting was wrong and wrong. And so as I was going through those stages of my life, I hit a rock. And as I hit the rock, I end up, my God, on the on 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 hear me now, on really rocky ground. And so as I was on rocky ground, I end up being um, hospital hospitalized regarding certain matters and it was a supernatural matter but see that's when I found God fully he saved me from a place called hell he saved me from a place that was looking like a rock in a hard place he stepped into the hospital bed with me and he told me that I was going to live again he let me out after three days of being in there he he ended up rising my situation he ended up being the cure of my circumstance I end up seeing him in my you understand just so many different things in my DNA healing certain things that I didn't know that I could be healed from just certain things I watched God do in my life that that the, the hospital was telling me oh it was over you understand and so when I speak about the love of God because he did everything in my life to fix my mind I was in the hospital bed and they was trying to sit there and admit me to a place that was going uh hear me take me away from my kids 
God stepped in when no family member showed up to the hospital. Hear me now. And so as I was in the hospital, the only relative I had was Jesus Christ. You hear me talking in my mind, helping me, guiding me, telling me what to say or what not to say. Because the hospital, even certain people in the hospital was looking towards the downfall, not the people, but the spirit that was serving the people. And so that's when I realized that that the hidden seed was on me. That's when I realized that God had a plan for my life. That's when I realized that everything he said from Jeremiah 29, 11 was true and that he was going to give me an expected end. And so as I thought I was losing my mind and it was a spiritual awareness, I have all this on my um, beginning starts of ministering and telling my story. And so if that's you, child of God, go back and watch it. But. I feel led to share with y'all after journeying down that new age road, it almost took my life. And so if that's you, make sure that you come back to Christ because that place is nowhere for you to heal. It's a false reality. It tries to, it solidifies a false identity. It makes you think that you're getting um, uh, popularity with instant gratification and feeding your ego, but not feeding your spirit or feeding your soul. But God is the God who lives always and forever. And so, yes, I definitely want to let y'all know that I testified to see that God, God saved my life. He showed me heaven. He showed me heaven. As he showed me heaven, I was in a rapture. He pulled me up and he called me up. And as he called me up, I was literally being able to ascend. And I had wanted to hear these things that I was going after these false gods for trying to get satisfaction from brokenness or, you know, failed, failed upbringings and just a failed mindset. A fail. I wasn't whole. I was incomplete. And I kept trying to search for myself in relationships, but they wasn't completing me. So I kept failing in that and everything that looked like a failure started to make me think that was my identity. But God. God pulled me up to heaven and he showed me things and he told me things and everything I heard I kept with me and he told me all of the things that I always wanted to hear since I was a child and he filled me I heard ministering spirits I was able to see them um, and they was filling me up with so much love and, and it was true and it was real and I realized that Jesus was the rapture Jesus was the increase Jesus caught me up and he saved my life and not only did he save my life God gave me the chance to come back to unite with my children you understand and so as I had that second chance to come back to life again as the, the as the enemy tried to take my life in a hospital bed and nobody could understand what was going on with me and so as I understood that even when they thought in the phys physical or natural realm that my lungs was my, one of my lungs was collapsing they were wrong because my God he overcame the weed that I was smoking he overcame all of the things that I was sinning in he overcame all of the wrongs he all of the things that I thought I was seeing and losing my mind about he was not he it was a lie but God was also staring staring in the midst of thee he was also still looking into the situation letting me know even when they thinking you're crazy and you're losing your breath and you hear me now you can't sleep and they casting spells upon your name hear me now I'm still here in your evil I'm still here in your wrong I'm still here my God and so when I start to understand Lord if you just get me out of this Lord if you just grab my hand Lord if you just get me back to my kids Lord if you just saved my life Lord I promise I will worship you And he did it for me The one thing that I asked him for Was for another Give me another chance And he did it for me But not only did he do that He gave me the best chance I could have ever received which, is, which was his son When I didn't even deserve it I didn't deserve his son I didn't deserve him and so we serve a good God who will forgive you when you are undeserving, who will reunite you with your children when you should have been dead. You understand what I'm saying, child of God? And so I, I, I feel led to share that today. And I want somebody to know that we serve a God of second chances who will reunite you with your purpose and re will relent from the disaster of what he planned to do to you if you repent from your sins and walk away from that lifestyle and choose him over again and, and no matter what you think the world will shame you on I watched God protect me in areas of my life that I thought I was going to experience shame on it turned out to be that once I took my hand off the offenses the enemy was exposed and so every single detail that should have looked like shame end up looking like Jesus that's the fame over that thing Jesus that's the risen over that thing and so 
he patent the protection <laughs> he gave me back to my children and, and and i'm able to live life in a loving way and i'm able to he's showing he gave me so much more than what i asked for you guys and i was i'm not deserving of it none of us are but it's just because his son is perfect that we get to experience life from the way that brokenness can't and once he came into my life, he completed me. He not only completed me, but he completed the purpose of my identity. No longer was it identity confusion, but he took every last seed that the enemy tried to take from me and he multiplied that seed to save other people. My God and many nations who need to hear the reassurance that they're not crazy too, but that they were gifted and they were predestined and set apart. And so when they walked away from circumstances that didn't serve them well and the enemy tried to trick their minds and tell them that they were my God a failure they lied the enemy lied and then even when the enemy tried to get you to focus on the, the 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 circumstance or the people or the situation to even make you go into a king baby syndrome entitlement to make you say oh my mama owed me this she ain't never do this she hurt me she robbed me i was raped i was abused i was you know what i'm saying all these different things and these are spirits my god that needed the that needed a cure for the curse and so it's always a spiritual matter before it was physical. But see, new age want to take you down a road to make you think that you need to look away from who you are to trick you towards an identity that is of a culture image that feeds only your ego. And so your ego, baby, can't get you to heaven. Why can't it? Because God feeds Leviathan. He feeds the pride. He feeds it. And so, baby, when you think that you're getting to God without Jesus... You're getting to the other opposite side where the enemy thought he was getting to be like God, but he fell from heaven because of his pride. And so you don't get the God that you deserve. You get the God that you kept desiring. You kept pleasuring for. You kept, hear me now, but you got the opportunity who, to get a God who empathized with what didn't make sense. And he not only, Jesus, listen, he not only looked at the purpose of me, but he looked at why I chose the path I chose and still didn't blame me.